Hello, welcome to a Sonic Lab special. We've got a little discussion set up here and we've got Paul and George from Modal Electronics. Paul, of course, is the sort of head designer from Modal uh, in charge of the 002 and all the other instruments and, yeah. and the 008. And George is the guy kind of behind the 008, which is the analog side, well, more pure analog voice synthesizer that's just been, just coming off the production line. Yeah. Very, very new. Yeah. Very, very new. And we've also got Luca in the background here, you may have seen before, and he's going to be playing and demonstrating because what we're going to do today is really take a look at the differences between the two instruments. So it's been a year between these releases. I mean, that's quite a lot of stuff to have done. What's been happening? We've been working on other products. So we've got 001 out, which is a two voice, three octave version of 002. And we've got 002R out, which is a rack mount version. Um, and yeah, we've got some other products being going on and we've been doing some development with George for 008, which is now uh, shipping. Right, well, I mean, one of the things that's kind of quite, probably coming up quite a lot is they're quite similar looking, aren't they, in terms of format and, lay uh, and layout, but they're very, very different. So what's different about the 008 to the 002? Okay, well, they're kind of two instruments that have been developed sort of very much in parallel going back along, a lot, well, Quite oh, wow. a long time before you know this this past year. 008 is a VCO synth. So it's analog it's, component. It's, yes, it, it's uh, discrete transistor circuits from oscillator all the way to audio output, uh, effectively. Um, so that there's there's differences in terms of the uh, the waveform generation at the front end, uh, the filters. In fact, the the entire architecture of the voices, I'd say, yeah, I mean, are. Uh, uh, approach quite differently. The only real similarity is they both got analog VCFs and analog VCAs. Other than that, they're completely different sonically and architecturally. So it's not a replacement for the 002, it's a kind of a separate instrument. Yeah, right? I, I like to describe them as fruit, like oranges and apples. They're both fruit, they both taste nice, but they're both quite different. Hmm. So coming back to the 008, is it based on a, a kind of a specific analog poly? Because I mean, you know, there have been comparisons. It's eight voice, it's analog. Mm -hmm. Jupiter 8? Yeah, no, it's, it's a very good question. So, I mean, it has uh, its eight voices. It has two-part multi-timbrality, single, dual, and split, very similar to Jupiter 8, for example. But it actually uh, has a lot more in common with synths way before that. Um, with the 008, I'd like to consider it more like the evolution of analog. And sometimes in order to sort of innovate and evolve, you have to go right back to first principles. So actually what the 008 does is it goes right back to uh, you know, the book of analog electronics and starts again uh, with a bunch of discrete transistors and, and logic and passives. So it's got more in common with the pre-chip synths, such as CS80, Oberheim, 4Voice, these kinds of things. We should really hear something, I think, at this stage. Mm -hmm. um, Maestro, will you take us, uh, take us into the world of some, some waves and filters, please? This is quite an unusual sounding filter. So which one, can you, can you read them and spot which one's which? Uh, I believe this is three pole phase shift plus one pole low pass. I mean, this sounds like a common, I, I've not heard of that as a filter. I mean, have you been able to have quite a lot of fun in sort of designing the configurations when you've been putting all these multi-modes together? Well, you have a, a number of possible combinations that you can do with a, a four-pole filter and the various options you have. Not all of them are, are musical and useful. Some of them sound quite similar. Yeah. Um, so the, the ones that are picked together are the ones that are uh, kind of useful and nice sounding and, and kind of give you a broad range of sounds, particularly when coupled with the different resonance characteristics that the synth offers and the different drive characteristics as so well. So perhaps we could listen to, uh, but it does, basically at its core is a four pole low pass filter. Yes. Right, yeah. was that ladder, transit, which, what sort of type of filter is that? Does that have a kind of... It's a unique filter. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a four pole discrete transistor filter. Um, in what is a, a fairly novel architecture, particularly around how the resonance is, is handled and how the multi-mode behavior is handled as well. And when you bring the resonance right up, does it kind of start to sing and... Oh yeah, there we go. So with 15 filter types, I mean, there's quite a lot to choose, but it's a single filter, so you're not running them in parallel or any of that sort of thing. That's correct, it's a single filter. So it's 15 different filter types. 
But also you have different resonance characteristics. So there are some filters out there where you have a constant amplitude versus resonance and some where the actual passband gain varies, which is a response some people will be used to. Um, but and does that actually... translate to when you put the resonance up, the bass doesn't disappear? That's yeah, kind yeah, of... yeah. So you can choose how uh, this I think filter Luke, Luke behaves. Right, let's have a listen. Luke. Um... So that's, is this in constant mode or in? Yeah. But what you'll find is that this, when you turn up high resonance in this mode, you get a more kind of raspy, grungy sound. Where, whereas if you remove the constant amplitude resonance characteristic, you can have a much smoother, cleaner resonance effectively. So you, you've got this variation in each mode. Right. Also coupled with being able to drive the filter input in different ways in order to change it again. Um, um, you, were, you were talking about the discrete componentry. I mean, obviously, mm. since those early synths were built, technology's moved on. Things have become a lot more stable, a lot more reliable. Absolutely. Does that mean it's less analog? Ah, yeah. Well, th well this is it. There are, there are sort of areas where you have to have some precision, or at least you have to have a suitable level of precision uh, such that the thing is musically useful. You've got to be careful not to go too far in different areas of the design so that something becomes too precise and too clean because there are other options for, for that, that sort of sound and really the, the natural tonal and timbral variations right. you get from a bit of movement and kind of slack in components is actually musically very useful but choosing where you need to know to, where the slap where to put yeah, the slap. precisely. Yeah. You need to have just enough and not too much, and it needs to be in the right areas. And we've put a lot of thought into that in this. So this I'm guessing with design. the 002, mm -hmm. you've got NCOs, which are sort of mathematically DSP generated oscillators. Well, not DSP, but yes, they're mathematically generated oscillators. And so I guess the thing about that is you can make them really perfect, but do you have to build, do you, are you building sloppiness into that we, to give it we, that? See, yes, we, in a way, what we did was we approached the design, um, so each oscillator is its complete own separate oscillator. It's not tied mm. to any of the others. Right. So yes, by virtue drift. of that, we get a natural bit of drift and movement. So on 002, if you put two oscillators on the same pitch, they are never quite perfectly in tune and quite perfectly in sync. So you get a natural bit of movement. Right, so you can hear there is there's a natural bit of, bit of movement. The oscillators aren't detuned, um, but there's just enough there to give it a bit of natural warmth. So I guess the question is, you know, what what would you say that the 002 has that's uniquely 002? Um, it is its own instrument. It doesn't sound like anything else on the planet. We've got some nice digital waves, a nice warm classic based filter with some twists on it. Uh, and it does sound different. I mean, we can do some nice sort of digitally type sounds and um, if Luca can just play some. I mean, these are sounds that are very difficult to get on analog only instruments, um, but it's a very different type of sound. Um, and there is nothing else that sounds like And that's to do with the sort of wave table and the, the, yeah. the ability to correct all of them. Yeah, totally different. So on the 008, mm. I would guess would be the same question to you. You know, what is the sort of, uh, the thing that makes it 008-ish. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, 008 has a very kind of big, warm, liquid, rounded sound, which you can kind of drive as far as you like to have a, a sort of flattered character. And it's going to trigger some nostalgia in people. I think people are going to yeah. play it and they're going to come across sounds or tones that they think, oh, you know, that does it for me. That, that, that does it for me. Um, well, we've got another know, arpeggio bass patch, I think, yeah. lined up on this, which is sounds like it's doing some really interesting things with the filter. Mm. Yeah. And again, it's unique, it's different, it's its own beast. It's interesting because both synths actually sound like they've got effects on them, but they're not. Yeah. They're no. just. Everything you hear is dry. So is it possible to actually play? Let's get sign, you know, pure sine waves out of it just by playing the filter. You can eight voice poly yeah, sine waves. We can, we can do that. Absolutely. Lucas yeah. probably got a sound lined up, and that's just the filters playing across eight voices. Yeah. So if you'd like to add a little release on that, let the notes overlap. Right. So this is just the filter resonance. So you can hear how clean it is and how precise it is. So if you want something silky smooth and precise and gorgeous, you can get it, and you can get it dead in, in 
tracking across the keyboard polyphonically. But if you want to drive it and really kind of make it gnarly and distorted, you can also do that. Well, on the 002, I remember the filter architecture is slightly different. You can actually, you've got control over the specific drive to the filter, right? Yeah, I mean, that, that's one of the differences between the two architectures is the drive is in a slightly different place and you've got a slightly different type of control over it. Have we got something that will demonstrate how drivey it can be? So that's really pushing the filter with the resonance up and it sounds quite gnarly. And I say people have described it as Sid Vicious in a wedding dress. Because it can be quite nice, but it can be quite fine. I like it. <laughs> so this, but, but this again, it, this is, uh, in the 002 there's an analogue filter. There is a, yeah. And it, but it's a different type of filter. Yeah, it's based on a classic transistor ladder, it's discrete components again, and like all of our products, it uses modern components. So they're reliable, we've just tried to design everything to last 10 years at least, if not longer. So just to sort of try and highlight the difference between these two instruments a little more, have we got another patch we can hear on the 002? Yeah, we've got a couple more digital electronic patches. Right, so this is more of your classic kind of wavetable... Sort of bell sounds, yeah. yeah. So is there some FM going on there? No, there's no FM. Um, one of the reasons we don't have FM on 002 is because we have 56 waveforms, and a lot of them can sound like bells, can sound quite like FM. So you can get the DX70 type bass sounds and that kind of thing. So it's one of the reasons we didn't feel we needed to put FM on 002. And uh, another sound for the 008. Again, this sounds like it's got a delay on it, and this is... They're all completely dry. It's just LFOs yeah, there's, modulating. There's no so, I've also, is it possible to have cross-modulation and frequency modulation type patches in the 008? In analogue synthesis as well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've got FM on the um, 008. Now that again sounded like there's chorus and delay going on there, but it's not. Mm. So that's just what. Os it's, so we got to it's the architecture. Lots of oscillators, sort of uh, harmonics phasing in and out of each other naturally, but mm. it's it's not post processing or chorusing or delay. Mm. So the architecture, just to just to just to recap, two VCOs. Uh, yeah, yeah. What that's about correct. sub oscillator? What waves have we got? We've got. We've got uh, for the VCOs uh, fairly conventional in terms of sawtooth triangle, a square wave, pulse width modulation, uh, and noise source. Right. So for each um, VCO, you also have a sub oscillator, too. Um, Is that a fixed square wave? That's a fixed square wave, yes. Is it two octaves or one octave below? One octave. One octave below. Now, ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, so the 002 handles sub octaves differently, doesn't it? Yeah, the sub oscillators in 002, because we have digital oscillators, we can do a few more clever tricks that you can't do so easily in analog. So you can have a standard square wave if that's what you like, but you can press the sub wave button and the sub oscillator will have the same waveform as the main oscillator. So you can do some really complex sort of PWM sounds and sawtooth and things. And can you affect the interval of the sub oscillator so it's m not just octaves, it can be... No, it's fixed to one octave, the same right. as 008. So. Right, okay. Let's have a listen to what that could sound like, so. So that's with a square wave. And that's with a, the matching wave. So it's harmonically the two match and it gives you a fuller sound. Right, okay, so so the sub oscillator becomes the same wave as the, right, okay, yeah. that's interesting. One thing I did notice, there were some interesting new methods in the software of being able to route modulations in the 008. Mm. Uh, absolutely. Every modulation source can modulate every destination on the synth by a unique amount and all simultaneously. Holding assign buttons and moving any knob and that quickly assigns, say, an envelope to a, a glide amount or an uh, LFO to a decay control just with a, a single tap of a button. And the LFOs, um, Audio rate, you're getting up there into audio rates with those? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the LFOs can also be made to track the keyboard. Um, so people have done some interesting things like this already. Yep. Um, I'm goes. waiting to hear what people do. So presumably 002 got similar capabilities? Yeah, we've got the similar sort of functionality in 002 LFOs. We've got um, a sort of attack fade in parameter, so you can use them as um, an envelope, and they've got the same single shot mode. On top of that, of course, in 002, we've got the animator, which gives you the ability to animate a whole plethora of parameters on the synth. Have we got a patch to demonstrate that? That's a multi-step. 
Yeah, basically it's, it's easiest thought of as a 32 step step sequencer with 12 rows and each row can be a parameter on the synthesizer. You can have waveforms, filter cutoffs, LFO rates, anything you want and each step can have its own um, length so you can have it all like a rhythmical kind of thing and create some rhythms. Right, as we have it. And that's separate to the arpeggiator. That's separate the to the arpeggiator and the sequencer, yeah. Any, do you ever feel perhaps you put a, a, an embarrassment of riches in this? Because that's a lot of modulation, right? It's a lot of modulation, but it's one of the things people expect from modern synthesizers. And, hmm. you know, it's one of the, the good advantages and things you can do with modern synthesizers that you couldn't do with some of the early ones. So in terms of production, that side of things, I mean, obviously some, some things that people tend to think about is like, mm, small company, lots of products, how am I going to get my support? Are they going to? What's the build quality going to be like? All of those sort of things are likely to be questions. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't consider ourselves a boutique manufacturer. We're not making these in ones and twos. We're making these in sort of hundreds. Um, the support network, we've got support centres all over the world. We pride ourselves on our support and our customer service, mm. and we're very particular about the way we do that. We like to have a one-to-one -one relationship with our customers, and we pride ourselves on that relationship. So what are the plans now? I mean, obviously, this the 008 is literally just rolling off production. Yeah, I think the first one shipped um, end of last week, um, and there's some more shipping this week, so yeah. And what happens next? We've got other products in development for NAM, um, but we, we don't like to say what they are until we're ready to show them, and that we've got a degree of confidence that it's pretty close to the final version. Right, OK. So perhaps I think maybe a good way to finish would be to just give us yeah. a little bit of uh, musical. But, but before we go, I uh, just want to say thank you ever so much for watching. This has been a kind of overview of what's going on at Modal, with, particularly with the uh, inclusion of the new 008. I want to say thank you very much to Paul Thanks, and George and Luca as well for joining us. Um, we'll leave it at that. Don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.